Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We have a lot of folks that are still uh, signing in, so we're gonna get started in just another minute or two. So please hang tight and thank you for your patience. All right, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's presentation, our official introduction of the latest Metasys release, Metasys 10. I know I could speak for the team here today. We're really excited for today's presentation, especially because you're some of the first in the industry to get a look at the, all the new features and enhancements in this release. Um, so but before we get into the Metasys 10 release, I wanna take just a few minutes to introduce you to today's speakers and give a few quick housekeeping announcements. So joining me here from our headquarters in Milwaukee, Wisconsin is Chris Lane. Chris is the Director of Product Management for Building Automation Systems and joined Johnson Controls in 1992. He's held various positions and in his current role, he leads a team of product managers responsible for the Johnson Controls Metasys product line. And joining us from Houston, Texas is Chip Dudley. For the past two years, Chip has been a regional BAS channel account manager responsible for supporting and growing controls product sales through the Johnson Controls branch offices in Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Prior to his current role, Chip held senior sales positions within the Houston and New Orleans branches offices for 26 years, selling complex BAS and HVAC equipment projects within a variety of vertical markets. And my name is Jane Wombley. I am the product marketing manager here at Johns Controls, responsible for our building automation system portfolio. So with that, um, today's agenda is really quite simple. I'm gonna spend just a minute or two going over what Metasys 10 features help address in terms of the common challenges we know that you all face in your day-to-day -day jobs. Uh, then we'll move on to what's new with Metasys hardware at this release, including our new Ethernet ring topology support for our Metasys IP field equipment controllers that we introduced at Metasys 9 release um, about a year ago, and the sleek new modern design that we're implementing in our new network sensor line and a new thermostat controller, plus two brand new Metasys equipment controllers. 
Then we'll talk you through our new and improved integrations capabilities. And Chris will actually give a live demo of the new features in our world-class intuitively designed Metasys interface. Uh, just a reminder that today's presentation will be recorded. So if you ever wanna go back and watch it or share it with your colleagues who may not have been able to attend, we'll make a copy of the recording available to you shortly after the live event, as well as a copy of the presentation itself. And we'll also leave about 10 minutes for Q&A at the end. So please submit your questions at any point during today's presentation, presentation excuse me, using the chat or the questions panel. And we'll do our best to make sure that that gets answered at the end. If we run out of time, we'll certainly publish a frequently asked questions document to make sure all of your questions get answered. So, you know, regardless of where we're at with our Metasys release cycle, we know that you face the same challenges every day. Uh, we also know that what we've included here on the screen captures just a few of those challenges, but we'll spend just a minute or two talking through what the new features at Metasys 10 help address in terms of these common challenges. So starting in the upper left, we know that you just don't have the time or money to deal with the system failure. But Metasys is now configurable in several IP-based network configurations to provide you more system resiliency. Moving to the right, we hear time and time again how many of you are continually forced to do more with less, shrinking teams, shrinking budgets. So we've added some high impact features to our intuitively designed interface to maximize operator efficiency and reduce time on task, like our expanded search and reporting capabilities to easily make more informed decisions. In the lower left, we know that different building systems you manage are converging. So at Metasys 10, more than ever before, we're providing a truly unified platform to see and manage all of these different systems from a single common interface. And lastly, we know that providing safe, secure environments for your building occupants is table stakes. It's absolutely critical. So those new IP-based network configurations that we'll learn more about will help ensure that your building systems are suitable for IT-managed infrastructure. And also this uh, integrated unified approach helps you quickly respond to critical alarms across multiple systems, creating a safer and more comfortable environment. So with that, I will turn it over to Chris and Chip. Yep. All right, thanks Jane, and yes, we are very excited. Our teams have been working on Metasys Release 10 for over a year, so we're really pleased to be able to share with you the exciting new features that we've got here, hopefully making um, your lives easier and your staffs more productive with the Metasys release. Let's start with the Metasys hardware components for Metasys 10. And the best way to show that is to start with a kind of a network diagram of the Metasys topology, showing how our control components are typically uh, communicating together and wired together. So as you see in this diagram on the lower left, our equipment controllers, these are the lower level controllers that are typically responsible for directly operating mechanical HVAC equipment. And for about the past oh, 25, 30 years, the way that they are communicating up to their supervisory controllers has been with either BACnet MSTP or N2 or other proprietary serial protocols that leverage twisted pair, three wire twisted pair type wiring for that type of communication cabling. In order to share the data between those controllers and their network engines to coordinate their control and share data. Now the higher level components like the network engines and the application data server, they've traditionally been networked together using Ethernet or BACnet over IP, and that leverages the use of Ethernet cabling like CAT6. And most of you are probably familiar with Ethernet as it's pretty ubiquitous in networking technologies in IT or LAN applications like networking together office PCs or printers or telephones. And we're starting to hear from customers a preference for that kind of networking technology to be applied to all of the building automation system components as well. So at release nine, about a year and a half ago, we released a family of IP-based equipment controllers. Controllers that directly operate the HVAC equipment, but then get networked back up to the network engine using BACnet IP, um, an Ethernet-based protocol. And at release nine, our IP controllers supported being networked together in uh, a couple of different topologies. The first one shown here is a star topology. 
where you home run the CAT6 cabling from each controller to a switch port. Also at release 9, we supported daisy chain topology, where the Ethernet cabling is run from controller to controller and only uses one switch port. Now each of these two topologies have their own associated pros and cons. Star topology is more resilient to a cable failure or to a controller offline event, so that if a single cable between the switch and a controller breaks, the network engine can still communicate with the downstream controllers. Star topology, on the other hand, is more expensive from an installation cost perspective, since it requires more ports on the switch and more cabling because the Ethernet cabling is home run back to the switch. Daisy chain topology is less expensive to install since the cabling is run from controller to controller. It also requires significantly fewer switch ports. The problem with daisy chaining, the con to daisy chaining, is that it's not as resilient to a cable failure or from a controller offline as star topology. So if a cable breaks, the communication between the engine and the downstream controllers is lost. So we've addressed that situation at release 10 by supporting an, a third topology. This topology is the uh, ring topology. Ring topology provides kind of a happy medium between the installed cost and network resiliency, pros and cons that I just mentioned between star topology and, and daisy chain. The ring manager topology doesn't require as many ports or as much CAT6 Ethernet cabling as the star topology, but it also provides resiliency in case a cable breaks or a controller goes offline, because with the ring topology, there are two pathways to each controller. The ring topology solution was developed in partnership with Cisco and it leverages the industrial switch provided by Cisco that features the media redundancy protocol, or MRP. And this is more than just a firmware update to our IP controllers, it's a full solution. Yeah, Chris, great summary. Thank you for introducing Ring Topology. So let me just summarize the high points that we discussed. So connected topology is standard with Cisco switch technology. So there's nothing that's being introduced here that is either you know, bleeding edge that uh, somebody would be a guinea pig testing out or something like that, but these switches are all standard Cisco switches. Nothing here is proprietary to Johnson Controls or, or, or anybody else. The topology achieves, as you stated, the best in balance between the cost effectiveness and the network resiliency that is provided by the communication ring. So those of us that are involved with IT know the expensiveness or the high cost of data drops. And you could imagine what that would look like installing a star topology in a very rich environment with multiple, maybe even hundreds of VAD box controllers. So the ability uh, from a backwards compatibility perspective, this is a perfect fit for clients that want to take advantage of the future proofness, if you will, of IP technology in new buildings or additions to buildings. So this, this topology and this technology seamlessly interacts and integrates with existing MSTP installations, allowing a perfect ability to add this type of system and take advantage of IP installations in the future. And as I mentioned, this is more than just a, a firmware upgrade to our existing IP controllers. It's much more than that. It's a really, it's a full solution. We've modified our system configuration tools to jumpstart the configuration of the Cisco switch. And we're also providing our channel partners with multiple ways for them to purchase and obtain support for the Cisco switches in their networking gear. So we feel that at release 10, our IP controller solution with its three supported networking topologies, star, daisy chain, and ring, makes an IP-based building automation system an affordable reality that really only Johnson Controls can deliver. Now let's move on to our refreshed versions of our Metasys hardware components, leveraging a brand new industrial design, which we feel is 
more modern in appearance, more functional, and much more powerful. And all of our future components will leverage those same characteristics to make it noticeable that these are all part of the new generation of Metasys. I'll start by showing you the new design for what is typically the most visible component within Metasys found within the building, and that's the room sensors. Shown here is our brand new room sensor with our new packaging design. The package shown here is our black enclosure, and we'll also provide these in an off-white if needed to match various interior decor. Our new sensor design leverages a capacitive touchscreen interface with a variety of occupant interaction capabilities. And that eliminates any types of bulky knobs, sliders, or plastic doors. And in addition, we're adding a series of models that feature four sensors in one package. And we call those the, the four-in-one sensors. It can sense temperature, occupancy, carbon dioxide, and humidity all in one package, which could potentially save you some installed cost if you require all those sensors. And you don't need to muddy up your, your walls with two or three or maybe even four individual sensors, only the one. We're also refreshing and modernizing our TEC 3000, our network thermostat. Our TEC 3000s are very similar to the sensors I just discussed, but these are actual controllers, perfect for controlling packaged HVAC equipment like rooftop units or heat pumps. Our new TEC 3000 incorporates the same new packaging aesthetics as the sensors I just showed with black or off-white enclosures with the rounded corners. These new TECs also feature a higher resolution, a much more clear and color touchscreen interface, whereas our previous models shown on the lower left there were only grayscale. The color touchscreen provides a much more visually appealing interface for your building occupants. It exudes a sense of quality and modernness, and color also provides an opportunity to draw focus or visual attention to certain pieces of information or status on the display like for example, alarms. Yeah, Chris, in terms of sticking with the new industrial design, the new modern look and feel of this TEC controller is available both in white and black. And the same simple configuration capabilities that our prior version of the TEC 3000s have been retained in this version as well. So full backwards compatibility for those of you who are familiar with our older TEC models, and the same configuration capabilities exist in these as well. We're applying the same design concepts to our equipment controllers. You know, even though these kinds of controllers are normally hidden out of sight, either in control panels in a mechanical room or above ceilings on VAV boxes, we felt it was important to also apply the same visual design concepts to these devices to make sure customers could identify them as being part of the same family of the modern new generation of Metasys. So in addition to enhancing their aesthetics, we've also incorporated some features to make these devices easier to install and to service. Removal screw terminals enable them to be easily wired, rewired, and replaced. We've also replaced the binary dip switch addressing with a rotary di decimal dial so that controller addresses and identification can be easily identified by service techs without having to translate binary numbers to decimal. We've also made some significant improvements under the hood as well. These new controller designs feature a much faster microprocessor with more memory, and that will be used to handle more sophisticated control applications, as well as providing lots more room and power for any kind of future upgrades that we can think of. We expect these to have a very long operational life. All of our new equipment controllers will also feature embedded real-time clocks to support onboard scheduling, alarming, and trending, making them much more resilient to communication issues or communication loss to their supervisory controller. So if a loss of communication occurs between these equipment controllers and their network engines, they won't, for example, miss any occupancy schedule transitions since the schedule is onboard. Or they won't miss capturing the time stamping of events like alarms or trends, since those features are also handled on board. 
they'll simply resync once the comm has been reestablished. And then coming this summer, we'll be introducing a brand new family of Metasys network engines that will share the same new industrial design concepts. And the reason I'm giving you that kind of sneak peek is because at this release, at release 10, we are making some improvements to our existing engines under the hood to prepare the software as we transition to our newer hardware design. So going forward, starting at release 10, we're changing the underlying operating system for all of our network engines to be based on Linux, which is an open source operating system with lots of developer support. And we've chosen Linux because it provides us with much more control over the application enhancements and cybersecurity improvements that we plan to incorporate into our network engines over the next several releases. And speaking of cybersecurity, at every release of Metasys, we improve our software to address cybersecurity vulnerabilities, and release 10 is no different. At release 10, we're incorporating an encryption technology to secure the communications occurring between our network engines and our servers, preventing bad actors from exploiting the BAS data in some unknown or nefarious ways. Yeah, Chris, these are just fantastic enhancements to the con Metasys controller family, and I can't speak enough for the enhancements that have been made in these new controllers. A couple of things to mention. I know in my market here in Houston, uh, one thing that drives, uh, particularly in the healthcare industry, is positive feedback on VA VBOX controllers, and these new CVM controllers have built-in feedback capability on the damper actuator, so no longer do we have to use an external actuator introducing another component to the BAS components that are involved with VAV boxes? But we also have the input capability within this controller to read positive feedback from either a, another dual duct actuator or a hot water valve actuator itself. Another additional feature is USB ports have been added to the VAV box and the the new general purpose controller for future use as new firmware is introduced to these controllers as well. Yeah, we're really excited about releasing our brand new family of sensors and equipment controllers in the short term future network engines. Let's switch now to what's new with our software at release 10, starting with Metasys integrations. Yeah, Chris, this is a quick walkthrough of three categories of integrations that are being introduced as part of Rev10. So we have new and enhanced Metasys integrations to fire alarm, security, and lighting control systems, the productivity enhancements to Metasys user interface, and field productivity enhancements to software licensing and system tools. So before we take a closer look at each one of these, let's reflect a bit on what we can already do with these types of integrations. So you may ask why we've had the capability to do, do these integrations before. So what has changed? I mean, we've been, inter we've been integrating these type of systems to Metasys for years. But really the big differentiator here is these enhancements allow us to move from what I'll refer to as customized integrations or bringing in raw data into Metasys and then having to format it properly, having to put it in the nomenclature that an owner has established as a standard within his system and establishing an, a standard and organized database, these integrations introduce a standardized way of integrating these type of systems into Metasys. So what does this do for our customers? Well, it saves time and money is a, probably the biggest way of summarizing it. It allows for the implementation time to be drastically shortened from sometimes week to only days, and possibly even smaller integrations in less than a few hours. So more organized and usable data will be exposed than in the past, and these types of integrations are now more affordable to our customers than ever before allowing them to realize their goal of information through one pane of glass through the Metasys user interface. And the fire alarm system and security system integrations leverage the power of the Tyco and Johnson Controls merger to enable delivery of bundled systems and projects faster and more affordably than ever before. 
So let's take a look at these systems or these integrations in a little bit more detail. Chris? Sure, so here is a, a screen capture of our Metasys user interface showing just an example of what can be done when integrating fire security and lighting information into a single pane of glass like Chimp had mentioned. Shown here, I've got status points for the lighting, fire, and security systems, as well as a graphical representation of where some of the system components are actually physically located within that room, in this case, a chemistry lab in a high school. With our new and enhanced integrations, you can really unify your operator interface to achieve a fully integrated solution consisting of not just HVAC information any longer, but also fire notification, access control, and lighting. Symbols like command dialog boxes, the colors that are used to represent status, are all consistently applied across all of these disparate systems. So let's go into each integration a little bit more detail, starting first with the Simplex Fire System integration. At release 10, we've simplified the integration of the Simplex systems, BACnet points, into Metasys. So Simplex has always been able to integrate into Metasys via BACnet, but what we've done at release 10 is to improve our tools to streamline that integration workflow and by focusing on integrating the kinds of information that would most likely be usable by a facilities manager. So instead of just saying uh, these systems can just talk back net, they talk together and leave it at that, we took a deeper look at how we make this much more easier for our channel partners to, to implement, as well as what information would be most beneficial for our end customers operators. And the example I'm showing here is on the Metasys user interface, the smoke detectors and pull stations are visualized or they're actually located in the space. And status boxes indicate that they're operating normally, or they could be showing if they're in need of maintenance attention, for example, like if the smoke heads were dirty. Also at release 10, we've created a new Metasys integration driver uh, in concert with Tyco that's used to integrate the Tyco Secure Access Control System and the Victor Video Management Systems. So by integrating access control system data into Metasys, we can automate building system operations based on security badging events. So for example, incorporating badging events into an overall building system-wide occupancy strategy, such that when an occupant leaves the building for the day and badge swipes out, not only is that exit event captured in the security system and logged there, but also that person's office temperature controls might be reset back to use the energy saving unoccupied set points, but also the office lights might turn off to save energy. Video camera status and analytics data can also be captured into Metasys and also be used in occupancy strategies or to trigger other automation events. And then lastly, we've partnered with two leading lighting providers, Cree and Molex, to simplify their BACnet integrations into Metasys. We've leveraged our expert knowledge of BACnet and of building automation systems to help Cree and Molex improve the implementation of their BACnet gateway, so that instead of serving up individual BACnet points per lamp, they now organize their lighting data as lighting zones or groups and then they represent those as virtual BACnet devices so that they don't overwhelm Metasys with loads of unorganized discrete data. And once integrated, Metasys can then be used to automate turning lights on or off and coordinating lighting with HVAC operating or to adjust lighting levels or lighting scenes based on occupant preferences or control strategies. You can also use lighting in concert with the Simplex fire system panels. For example, if a fire event happens, you may, in addition to using the fire system and its strobe indicators to indicate that there is a fire, you may also want to program in and use lighting to help with egress, to help occupants evacuate the building safely and efficiently. Another nice thing about the lighting integration is that some of the lighting fixtures provided by Korean Molex include integrated or built-in temperature, humidity, 
light level and or air quality sensors. Those sensor data or that sensor data can then be implemented into Metasys and that could potentially be an installation cost savings uh, so that you don't need to mount those separately wired components. So let's talk about an er one of the earliest customer successes relating to this lighting integration. Johnson Controls has been selected as a technology and systems integration partner with Georgia Pacific. The digital transformation of Georgia Pacific's Atlanta headquarters results in this effort and provides for reduced costs, significant energy savings, improved operational efficiency, and enhanced employee productivity and comfort. So let's talk for a moment about how this was done. Well, Johnson Controls, as Chris had stated, worked in collaboration with Molex to create a standard integration solution between Metasys and the Molex IoT, or Internet of Things, digital building lighting network. And the connected lighting solution for the building was designed, built, and tested in Johnson Controls Integration Hub before it was introduced into this project. The Molex Digital Building Lighting Network uses Johnson Controls Metasys Building Automation System integration to deliver a highly secure solution which monitors light level, temperature, air quality, and even detailed occupancy information for a completely connected environment within the GP headquarters. Office spaces within Georgia Pacific's building will utilize Molex IoT temperature sensors to provide a better temperature control without the expense of additional sensors for each office. And Georgia Pacific will also have the ability to respond to peak electrical demands by adjusting building systems via integrating energy usage from each lighting network. So in summary, the interconnected systems will allow a company to collect accurate real-time data to better understand how the space is utilized, improve employee productivity, improve employee satisfaction, and maximize their real estate investment. So Chip and I have just discussed how at Release 10, we've improved the ways and added new ways for devices and information can be integrated into Metasys. But also at Release 10, we've made new and improved ways that Metasys information can be extracted out of and shared to and with other applications. At Release 10, we are releasing a telehealth API for Metasys. Telehealth is a third-party application, and it provides healthcare patients with an app for them to use their phone or tablet to control various aspects of their comfort level within their patient room. So when integrated to Metasys, the telehealth app could potentially enable, for example, control over the room temperature or the HVAC ventilation, lights, and the window blinds. Also at 10.0, we're releasing a new data extraction API to allow applications to gain access to Metasys historical data. Data like timestamps, trended data, alarms, and audits, all tagged with their spaces and equipment metadata, which is important to provide context. And this API will be particularly useful for facility personnel who prefer very high-end, powerful data analysis and visualization tools, tools like Power BI or Tableau, to perform sophisticated analysis on Metasys historical or trended data. And this new API is a RESTful API, it provides a very cybersecure, IT-friendly, tagged way of getting data out of Metasys. Yeah, Chris, I can't speak enough about um, uh, the, the tel telehealth API advantage that we provide with this integration. Um, those of you who are on the line that's in, that are involved with healthcare, it's very common knowledge within, the, within the, your industry that the importance of patient experience and patient satisfaction is critical with respect to HCAP scores, uh, we all know that within that industry that unsatisfactory scoring can result in reduced or held back Medicare funding reimbursements for hospitals. So this telehealth API is an example 
or an enabler of greater flexibility for hospitals, allowing patients to have full control over their environment via the telehealth phone application, thus increasing an overall patient satisfaction and experience. Great. And then the final area of content related to Metasys 10 is enhancements that we've made to the Metasys user interface. And the best way to showcase those enhancements is to go to our sales demo and actually show you the things that we've improved upon. So here is, and I'll probably need to log back in maybe, or maybe not. Well, it kept me logged in. Here is our sales demo site that shows a real life working example of the Metasys user interface. And for those of you who are not familiar with the interface, or maybe even for those that are, and this can be a refresher. This is some. This is a user interface that we released at Metasys Release 7 when we really overhauled the experience to focus on our end customers' operators' productivity. One of the key things that we did to differentiate our user experience is to tag information within Metasys with a spaces and equipment definitions. And we leverage those definitions to drive navigation, search, linking and other features within the user interface. So one example is on the left-hand side, you see our spaces navigation tree. This is something that is built based on the definitions of the spatial hierarchy of the data found within Metasys, making it very easy for operators to find dashboards related to various different aspects of Metasys simply by following the, the layout of the building the building, the floor, the wing, the room. If you know that information, you should be able to easily find information within Metasys. We also leverage that in our search bar, which is kind of Googling Metasys based on the equipment name you're looking for, or even the space name, like Conference Room 1 or Chemistry Lab. Let's go to the Advanced Search and Reporting widget and describe some of the enhancements that we've made at uh, uh, release 9 is the as well as the enhancements made at release 10. So the advanced search and reporting uh, widget was released at 9 and to give you kind of an idea of what it does it allows you to create quickly create tables of data based on uh, simple filters. So you don't need to know programming you don't need to know how to configure Metasys you simply need to know the layout of your building in order to get large amounts of data that can inform you to make um, troubleshooting decisions or find root causes. So in this case, I want to create a table of data that shows on floor one, I'll type in floor one of the high school, I want to look at all of the chilled beams and all of their zone temperatures and zone temperature set points. Click on search. So you'll see how easily it was for me to create this table of all the zone temperatures and all the zone temperature set points involved with the chilled beams on floor one of the high school as part of that enterprise. You don't need to know anything about programming or configuring Metasys in order to quickly create this view. There's a lot of inf interesting information in this view as well. The name of the point, the value. If the value is in a status that's not normal, we color code that. So this is in yellow showing that it's in low warning. And then more importantly, we provide context. So the space that that zone temperature is impacting or the piece of equipment serving that space is identified over here in this column, the spaces and equipment uh, column. This provides your operators with context about where this particular low warning point is impacting. And right now it's showing me it's impacting chilled beam number 102 feeding the library. So let's go and select the zone temperature set points using my selector over here. Let's just select a couple of them and go up to my actions bar and click on bulk command. This allows me to quickly override the set points for both of those set points, and I could have, I could be doing hundreds of set points at this point. That's why we call it the bulk command feature. And let's make that 74. 
One of the interesting things about our commanding dialogue is we use temporary or we have the option to use temporary overrides in case our operators might be forgetful uh, to release it after a certain period of time. One of the reasons for buildings to be operating either out of control or less efficiently is because things are left in manual for far too long. So let's only incorporate this override for an hour. And then the other interesting thing that we've added is the ability for operators to add a note based on what they're doing in the commanding dialogue. So if you have multiple operators using Metasys in your facility, this allows them to collaborate with each other to provide a reason why they put this in an override. And I'm just going to make sure, and I do have in this particular case, several different salespeople using this sales demo to give demonstrations to customers. So it'll probably be helpful for me to say that I did this because I'm doing a webinar. So you can see how quickly it would be to override all of the zone temperature set points for a specific space or an area of the building simply with a few mouse clicks. And there are the results. It gives me a successful uh, report out back saying that the two set points that I changed have been uh, successfully overridden. The other feature I wanted to demonstrate is the ability to create a report based on those filters that I just selected. In this create report wizard, I can select from four different report types. One of the interesting ones is the activity report. This is a combination of both alarms and audits. So you can create an alarm report, you can create an audit report, or this activity report combines both of those into a single report. Or I can also create a trend report, which is basically our historical data over time. And that's what I'll select for this particular example. And this was available at release 9, but what's new at release 10 is the ability to schedule reports to be emailed out at a regular cadence to a certain email address. Pick my email address and let's pick it every week. Let's do it every Thursday. Let's only do one occurrence and let's have that happen, say, at 6 in the morning. I'll give it a name. And as simple as that, I've now created a report that on a weekly cadence will run every Thursday, providing the information that you've uh, designated for it to run. If I wanted to go into my reports tab, I can now see all of the reports that have been configured for this site, including the one I just created. And there's action menus over here that allow me to then edit those reports, enable or disable them, or I could immediately run them now instead of waiting for it to happen. Or if I'm finished with that report, I can click on the trash can icon and have it deleted. I'm going to go back to the filter. And the other feature that we've added at release 10 is the ability to not only do bulk commanding, but also bulk modification of configuration parameters. So if I go to the object type and I select on the alarm extension and click on search, I can now, with a few, just a few clicks of my mouse, go in and do a bulk modify of, say, for example, all of the alarm high limits and low limits. So if my operators were not happy with the way that alarms were occurring with their system, and maybe wanted to widen out the range for when an alarm actually gets generated. Let's say change this high limit to 85 degrees and a low limit to 55 degrees, such that an alarm is only now going to occur between that range. I can make that bulk modification. So with literally just a handful of mouse clicks, I can make bulk modifications to dozens of alarm attributes or other configuration parameters. And the wizard guides me through to make sure that I'm making the appropriate changes and giving me a chance to make those changes before I actually commit them to the site. 
Let's bump back out to the uh, main dashboard to the school district and show you another feature that we've added at release 10 called the, um, the priority array being visible within our command dialog. So if I go to a commandable point, in this case the air handler on this particular floor, and let's go to its discharge air temperature set point and open up the commanding dialog box. So some of our Metasys operators out there who are listening might be familiar with certain situations where they've tried to command a point within Metasys and they don't understand the difference between an adjust or an override. Or sometimes they've issued an adjustment command and nothing seems to happen within the system. And in most of those cases, the underlying reason why is because they're not familiar with the concept called a priority array, which is a, a BACnet standard for how writable points handle multiple commands happening at different priorities. So what we've done within Metasys 10 is to expose the priority array within the commanding dialog box. So you can see this point has already been commanded with an adjust command, and that's happening at, really, at priority 16, which is the, the, the lowest priority you can uh, issue. So let's issue an override to say, let's go to 56 degrees. And again, I'm going to use a temporary override because I'm somewhat forgetful. And also add a note for the next time someone demo demonstrates this. They might want to know that I did this just to, to demonstrate this particular feature. And click Save. So this is going to issue an override at priority level 8. So that the next time I come into the commanding dialog for the discharge air temperature set point, it'll show the priority array showing uh, the command that's happening at priority level eight, as well as the priority that's hap or the command that's happening at priority level sixteen. And that will give your operators context about the differences between an adjust and an override, as well as what is impacting the system at that very moment. So as you can see over here in the priority array, the uh, adjustment command at 55 and the operator override at 56. The operator override has higher priority, so that's actually what is currently in effect. And then finally, the last feature I wanted to, to uh, demonstrate here is with our trend charting. So a lot of times when you're looking at trends for a complex piece of equipment, I'm going to expose the, or expand the trend widget here. A lot of times uh, data that's populated on a trend chart often have different enumerations or different units of measure. So when we go to look at a trend, as you can see here, sometimes it's difficult to visualize how a temperature is related to a pressure on the same exact chart. So we've added the ability to split up the charts and split up the units of measure. So now I'm seeing temperature and static pressure all on the same timeline. And I can zoom in and see the impact or the context between the values of a temperature versus the values of the discharge air pressure. So it allows operators to very quickly visualize trended historical data from disparate point types but all related together on the same timeline. It gives them better context and better meaning, helping them to troubleshoot problems quickly, get to root causes before they become major breakdown. So that's, uh, there are other features within the Metasys user interface, but we're getting a bit short on time, so I'm gonna kind of start the, the process of wrapping up today's webinar. Great, thank you, Chris. So real quick before we conclude with our Q&A portion, um, now that you've had a chance to see at least the, the premier features that are available at Metasys 10, we wanna hear from you what, you, what are you most excited about? So we're sharing a poll with you that we'll leave open for just uh, you know 30 to 60 seconds here, and I'll read them aloud. Which, which Metasys 10 feature are you most excited about? The new Ethernet ring topology support, the new 4-in-1 sensors and color touchscreen TEC 3000, the new equipment controllers, the new and enhanced integration capabilities, or the new interface enhancements. So we'll leave that open for just another couple of seconds here.
Okay, thanks for your participation. So it looks like we have a pretty close two-way tie for the new interface enhancements and the new Ethernet ring topology support. So that's that's great. Thank you so much for, for sharing your feedback with us. Uh, we're always excited to see how our customers are, are feeling about our, our new enhancements. So with that, I think we'll we'll go straight into the Q and A because, as Chris said, we 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 are running a little short on time. So Chris, if you want to move forward to the last slide here, um, and while we're we're continuing to submit those questions, I did just want to make a couple announcements here. So that um, I know a lot of you are probably going to be attending the 2019 AHR Expo next week. Uh, Metasys will certainly be there. So if you want to go ahead and see all of this great these great features live and in person. Um, we're going to be in booth 1627, so you'll get to see uh, the software demo. We'll have our new equipment controllers, the new sensors, the new integrations capabilities, lots of great stuff. As always, if you're interested in learning more about Metasys 10 or you're ready to upgrade, schedule an appointment with your John's Controls representative. We've got a link for you to be able to do that here. And just based on some of the questions and chats that have been coming through to, to me and to the other organizers, I know you've got some questions and some feedback you'd like to share directly with us. That's great. We've got a real simple email address for you, for you there, smart.buildings at jci.com. You can go ahead and round up your additional questions and feedback and uh, send that straight to us. I'm sorry, I think I'm being told we may have posted the wrong. Smart-buildings. Smart-buildings, I apologize. We'll get that updated before we send it out. So smart-buildings at jci.com. So okay, in the last eight or so minutes here, I'm just gonna, we're, and again, if we don't get time to answer your questions, don't worry, we'll address them in an FAQ document at the end. But let me just um, uh, get in here while I can. So, so I um, see a question in here yeah, that ahead, comes please. up very frequently. So every time we've discussed the, uh, the commanding dialog features, one of the frequent follow-up questions that we get from customers is, is there a method or a plan to allow restriction of users to only issue overrides of a maximum set duration or to force them to actually annotate on those commands. And as of release 10, no, that's not currently there, but it's been requested so often ever since we started demonstrating that feature that we've put that in the backlog and hope to get that added in a very near future release. Okay, great. So Chip, can you expand on what you meant by standard integrations versus custom integrations? When you were talking about the difference between what we're doing at Metasys 10 versus what we've done in the past? Sure. So, if, if, for, for those of you that have been involved in the integration, really um, integrating BACnet data is, you know, as you said before, James, it's table stakes in building automation uh, systems today. So, really, when, when, at least in the world of Metasys, when BACnet data is discovered, if you will, it comes in in a pretty raw form in, in, in most cases. And it also can come in in a completely unedited form. And so significant amount of time has to be taken, uh, you know, literally fat fingering in um, nomenclature and descriptors for this backnet data, as well as organizing them into, uh, you know, spatial relationships, floors, rooms, et cetera, whatever it may be. So the standardized integrations does a lot of that legwork in advance in terms of the, uh, the new tools that are introduced for the simplex and the secure integrations that have been enhanced as part of 10.0. So that shortens the time that integrations uh, of, of these type of systems uh, take place and allow it to be much more affordable. Basically, you know, when, when you're buying an integration, not only is it, um, you know, the probably the smallest part of the cost of an integration is the hardware involved, either an automation engine to pick up BACnet data or an integration engine uh, to translate uh, other protocols. But the majority of the cost really is the labor involved with not only organizing the data, but uh, creating the graphics, et cetera, that are typically used to read the data in tabular format or whatever it may be that the owner standardizes on. So that's really the summary between standardized and customized integration, in my opinion. Chris, if you can add anything, feel free. No, I think you did a good job of covering the differences there. Yep. Thanks, Chip. So um, we had a couple of good series of really great questions about um, the new equipment controllers. So 
does in ring topology does the back so first question Chris we'll kind of try to go through these quickly here does the backnet IP provide additional bus capacity in terms of communication bad bandwidth for example less bus communication issues oh definitely so um, with backnet over IP the the chances that you'll get like a busy network decreases significantly just due to the the throughput and the bandwidth available with Ethernet so that's one concern, so if you've got busy BACnet MSTP networks today, it's very unlikely that you would have that same situation with BACnet IP. Great. And then with respect to the new equipment controllers, what kind of encrypt, encryption, excuse me, what type of encryption do they use, and can the wireless capabilities be disabled or removed physically? Um, the first question on the encryption, are engines uh, communications between the engines and the server are using web services and we, we encrypt those using uh, TLS 1.2 over HTTPS, a secure uh, communication. Uh, the BACnet communications between the engines and the controllers though, that's just using traditional uh, BACnet messaging. Now BACnet standard is currently undergoing a review of a new uh, addendum to the standard. Um, called BACnet SC. And once that becomes an approved standard, we'll be adding that capability to our controllers. And that does provide an encrypted, secure BACnet communication at that level. Great, thanks. Is the well, no, wireless question. So our, our equipment controllers aren't, by their nature, wireless. They can be wireless enabled using add-on uh, Zigbee wireless modules that will then enable them to talk to themselves, their peers, and to wireless sensors uh, wirelessly. Also up to the network engines using a wireless network coordinator. So by their very nature, the controllers um, do not talk wireless, but they can be wirelessly enabled using our wireless Zigbee field bus system with add-on wireless modules. Not sure if that answers the question, but hopefully it does. Great, thanks. So this is kind of an interesting question regarding the name of the new controllers. We're not calling them FACs or or, or VMAs. What what what's the philosophy behind the naming convention there, Chris? Yeah, really, there were two underlying reasons why we changed the name and the part number for the controllers. First, we did want to differentiate these more modern, more powerful, brand new controllers from the existing controller family. There are significantly different you know, features available in the newer controllers, more, more memory, faster microprocessor, some wiring and serviceability features that have been added that we felt needed to be distinguished from the uh, existing line of family with the name of the controllers as well as with the part number. And with the part number, one of the problems with our um, existing part numbering uh, schema, so to speak, is that it was a little bit difficult for people to identify the controller simply by the part number. Now, with the new controllers, we've modified the part number to incorporate acronyms and numerals to distinguish what kind of controller it is, its networking type, so if it's, if it's a general purpose controller or if it's a VAV box controller or if it has networking via MSTP or if it's networked via IP Ethernet, how many inputs and how many outputs, those are all intuitively built into the part number. So CGM0909, for example, is a controller, general purpose, MSTP, with nine inputs and nine outputs. We hope to make it easier for our customers to be able to identify these new controllers. Okay, great, thank you. So. Uh, I think we're right at the top of the hour, so in the interest of time, we're going to go ahead and wrap the webinar. I know a lot of you are continuing to submit really great questions, so um, again, we'll pull all of these together and um, answer them in the next couple of days with an FAQ document. And again, um, please continue to submit your feedback, your questions with the smart dash buildings at jci.com. Again, apologize for the uh, for the typo there, but. Thank you so much for your time today. We're hope, we're, we hope you're as excited for Metasys Release 10 as we are. And uh, have, a great, have a great time at AHR if you go, and we hope, hope to see you there. Thank you.